how do you think the campaign is going? Well, I'm looking forward to Liberal Democrats making real progress at the election on Thursday, more Liberal Democrat MPs. And we still have the opportunity to stop Boris Johnson getting a majority to force through his hard Brexit deal with the real prospect that we could be out of the EU with no deal at all in just over a year. So the next few days will be absolutely crucial as people make up their minds in marginal seats across the country. It feels like you're striking a different tone to the one that when we last spoke, to be completely frank. Last month on the show, you said, I'm a candidate to be prime minister at this election. I Absolutely. Think that. Well, I'm technically still a candidate to be prime minister. Obviously, I'm the Liberal Democrat candidate for prime minister. But now you but, just want to make progress. But... Uh, clearly, things have changed since the beginning of the campaign. You know, when we started out, we had four political parties that had all been uh, floating around 20% in the polls. And with a first-past-the-post voting system, that created a massive opportunity. And so, uh, absolutely right to be very bold in, in going for that. What we've seen in the intervening weeks is a cosy stitch up between Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson. Uh, those two uh, parties now sort of indistinguishable and uh, obviously that's very worrying to, uh, to many people, even those who have supported the Conservatives, that now Boris Johnson is Nigel Farage's candidate for well, Prime Minister. Well, someone said that you've had a cosy stitch up as well with the Green Party, with Plaid. You, you've yeah, been well, your own I, alliances. Well, I, absolutely. I have worked with other uh, remain supporting parties and I'm very proud to have done so because the threat that we face to our country, to opportunities for future generations from Brexit is very significant and that's why we have worked on a cross-party basis with other parties that want to remain. But that stitch up between Farage and Johnson clearly changes the electoral arithmetic and makes it more difficult. Um, with that in mind, it it feels in some ways the best chance of the Lib Dems having any influence at the election, after the election, is if there's a hung parliament scenario. If there is, what would your tactics be? Because I know you don't want Boris Johnson in number 10. You've also said you don't want Jeremy mm -hmm. Corbyn in number Absolutely. 10. But what is your actual tactics when you're faced with the reality of the situation? Well, we'll find out, obviously, on Friday morning what the arithmetic is, what has happened in the election. Who do you and want Jeremy Corbyn? It, look, I've said for... Many reasons Jeremy Corbyn is not fit to be Prime Minister, neither is Boris Johnson. We've seen in the papers today further evidence of why that is. You know, 130 cases of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party that are outstanding. You know, a party that has really failed to get to grip with anti-Semitism under his watch as leader. That is not somebody who I could put into number 10. There's clearly lots of people within the Labour Party who I do work well with and have worked well with. In the last two and a half, three, three and a half years, we have been working on a cross-party basis to try to secure a people's vote. And that kind of cooperation will absolutely continue. So you'd course. potentially, I'm just trying to read between the lines mm. here, are you asking for like a kind of caretaker prime minister role if... There is look, a hung part. I'm, I'm very open-minded. Uh, Liberal Democrat MPs will be absolutely focused on stopping Brexit. And the more Liberal Democrat MPs that there are, the more likely it is that we will be able to achieve that. And of course, we will work and continue to work with Plaid Cymru, with the Green Party, with what the SNP, person, with Labour and Conservative MPs kind of person would who want to stop Brexit. Could put into number 10 then? I, I'm, I'm not going to be drawing names because we don't know what the scenarios are going to be, but I'm setting out what our approach is going to be. So we will be absolutely working to stop Brexit, doing so in a, in a cooperative way with others who share our values and share that goal. I mean, I guess what some people listening to this might be saying is, if you acknowledge now that it's pretty unlikely you're actually going to be Prime Minister, if you won't put Boris Johnson into power, but you also won't put Jeremy Corbyn into power, what's the point of voting the Dem? Well, the point of voting Liberal Democrat is to have more Lib Dem MPs who will work to stop Brexit. And in very many... just vote for Labour who well, want a second I, I mean, in, and in very many parts of the country, it's Liberal Democrats who are taking on the Conservatives. And whether those uh, Labour-minded voters decide to back the Liberal Democrats in lots of seats will help to determine whether or not Boris Johnson has a majority or whether they elect hard Brexiteers like Dominic Raab or John Redwood, where Liberal Democrats can unseat people like that. So, you know, the, the decisions that people make in the next few days are really going to be important to determine whether or not Boris Johnson has a majority. You said that you want to make progress in this election. If you end up with fewer MPs than you had when the election was called, would you then resign? No, I was 
elected as leader of the Liberal Democrats four months ago. And um, that's a big job to be done. And, you know, four months in, you know, I've, I've, I've made a start. I've already secured uh, more MPs because, of course, we had uh, 12 MPs at the last general election and uh, when I became leader of the party. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot that we need to do. There's a liberal movement to build. You we have, <clears throat> well, look, we have, I mean, we have a, a voting system that can, uh, you know, we all know doesn't favour smaller parties. But if we look at the range of um, metrics, the Liberal Democrat Party is in good health. We have more members than we have ever had in our history of more than 30 years as a political party. There is a, a movement out there of people who share our liberal values, who want an inclusive, fair and open society. And that is what we need to build. And that is what I am focused on doing. And that's not a job that gets done in four months, bluntly, Sophie. And so I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely here to stay. And I'm excited about the future. You talk about the voting system. You talk <coughs> about Nigel Farage's decision to stand down against Conservative candidates. But I just wonder if there's a few kind of self-inflicted mistakes that the Lib Dems have made as well. Um, your policy to revoke Article 50, if you actually end up winning an election, uh, so effectively cancelling Brexit. I just wonder, why did you decide to adopt that? Did you look at polling and, and people said it was a good policy? What, what was the evidence behind that? Well, I mean, it, it's a democratic decision by conference. It is a good policy because it's honest about what we would do. We are a party that wants to stop Brexit and we have set out how we would do that. We've been campaigning for a people's vote. And if we elected a Lib Dem majority government, obviously we would do that by revoking Article 50. Uh, it's also a policy which which is popular. I mean, if you if you look at the YouGov polls, you know, for people who want to remain, that's the, the preferred policy. In, indeed, Not, even among Labour uh, no. Remain voters, it's more popular than the Labour policy. Not everyone was convinced, though, were they? I mean, just have a look at Vince Cable, for example, um, the person, of course, who you took over from as, as party leader. He said the revoke was a distraction and not a very helpful one. Uh, to Norman Lamb, another of your very long-standing MPs, said we are playing with fire in many ways. When I have to say, when I go around the country, it's something that comes up quite a lot, this revoke policy. And if people are perhaps put off by Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson because they see them as extreme candidates, why did you adopt what many people would consider to be an extreme Brexit position? Well, our position is that we want to remain in the European Union. And some people will think that that is an extreme position. But I think it is about the kind of future that we want to see for our country. But doing it without a referendum is what some would see as extreme. Well, it's doing it through an election. So, uh, you know, it is only in the circumstances where we win a majority, which would be a democratic event, uh, which I think many people would recognise would be a, an electoral earthquake and therefore would have democratic legitimacy. So I, I recognise that there's people who criticise this policy, but, you know, generally there are people who want to leave the European Union. Now, you as well have been front and centre of your campaign. It's been you on the front of the buses. It's been you, your picture on the leaflets. Was it a mistake to run such a presidential style of campaign? Do you know what, Sophie? Uh, I've fought lots of different general elections and generally it is the leader of the party whose face is on the bus and whose picture is on the leaflets. I mean, that is what being a leader of a political party uh, is is like. And it's, it's exactly what I experienced when Charles Kennedy was leader, when Nick Clegg was leader and so on. So, you know, it isn't... It, it doesn't not everyone does that, do they? I mean, the well, Labour Party, for example, you wouldn't necessarily say that Jeremy Corbyn is on front of every bus and every leaflet. Well, and, uh, you know, he, he, he is not. And there's a story as to why that is, right? And that tells you something about even how many people in the Labour Party recognise that, you know, Jeremy Corbyn is somebody who, whether it's because he's you know, neutral on Brexit, refusing to take a leadership position, whether it's his failure to tackle anti-Semitism, those people have very real concerns about Jeremy Corbyn. And we can look at some of the polling around your approval <coughs> ratings sure. as well. Um, this is um, polling that we've seen uh, done by YouGov and Sky News. And you can see there, the, you know, it's almost quite difficult to kind of bring it up, but, you know, the unfavourable ratings there ticking up and up, the favourable rating staying low or dropping slightly. It almost feels like the more people see of you, they, the less they like you. I mean, is that, like, is that difficult? I mean, we're, look, we're in an election and I'm taking a very clear position on Brexit. I want to remain in the European Union. And, you know, I do recognise that some people aren't going to like that. They might not like what I say on Brexit. Some people don't like what I say, that I want Scotland to stay uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, some people, you know, don't like the way I talk or, you know, what my shoes look like or whatever else. But do you know what? I'm going to still stand up for what I believe in 
because I want to change things. I believe that our future can be better. Our country can be better. And that is what I'm working for. And yeah, some people will like it. Many people do like it. Millions of people want to see that future. And some people don't. And that's fine. That's politics. Do you think some of it is a bit sexist? Because you hear people talking about, you sound like a head girl. You sound a bit bossy. You sound a bit angry. Is well, it a bit sex sexist? Look, I mean, Sophie, you and I both, um, you know, exist within public life where we recognise that there are double standards that apply. And, you know, I, I knew that when I took on the job. Um, I want things to change because if I think about, you know, my nieces growing up, I want the world that they inherit to be one that is less sexist. And one of the ways that we can do that is by having women in leadership roles, um, blazing a trail, and I'm delighted and proud to be doing that. Okay.